That was enough. They didn't fight to win. You know, we fought to win. We fought in a place called Syria, and we knocked out 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. And then I said, bring them back home. Get them back home. We knocked out 100 percent. We knocked out al-Baghdadi. Killed them. And the biggest of all time, Soleimani from Iran, the father of the roadside bomb. Right, Wesley? Father of the roadside bomb. He was the worst. He was a bad, he was a bad guy. 94% of the people that walk around from wartime wounds where they have no legs or no arms and were just obliterated, 94% because of Soleimani. He made those things by the thousands and levels of sophistication that people would be very surprised at. Very, very surprised at. And he's gone. Think of that. So you have ISIS and you have the biggest of all, the, the head of Pakistan, Khan. He was a great uh, cricket player. He became the head of Pakistan. He said it was the biggest moment in my life. When I heard that Soleimani was killed, I left my office. I walked to my home. I stayed in my home in solitude for one week. It was the biggest event that ever happened to me. He was the biggest cricket player. That's like being a great NFL player or a great baseball player. He was the, said to be just about the best handsome guy. He became the boss, Pakistan. He said, I left and I contemplated for one week. It was the biggest event of my life. I've never had anything like that happen. And many people felt like that. And I heard there were repercussions, all of the things, but you have no choice. You have no choice. I told the story the other night, which I'd never told before, that when Iran shot down a drone, a metal drone, it was 14 years old, not very valuable, flying very near Iran. Behind it was an airplane with 39 engineers and pilots in it. And Iran shot down the drone. I said, did they shoot down the plane behind it? Because you have engineers that generally follow the drones, right? They said, no, sir, they didn't. I said, I see. They shot down the drone, but not the plane. They could have shot down the plane, which is about five times bigger. I said, that's interesting. So, but we had to hit them. So we hit them quite hard. We knocked out their radar and different things. And uh, we heard some word back from them because I made the statement that if they hit us back, we're going to do things to them that they've never thought possible. And Iran, this is Iran, the same Iran that's wiping Biden's face in the mud. They called us up and they said, first time I told this story was a week ago. They called us up and they said, listen, we have no choice. We have to hit you because we have our own self-respect, and I understood that. We hit them, they got to do something. We're going to launch 18 missiles at a certain military base that you have. And you remember that night, interesting night. I was the only one that wasn't nervous because I knew what was going to happen. They told us that don't be concerned. We're going to launch 18 missiles at your military base, but none of them will hit the base. These are very accurate missiles. These are missiles that essentially never miss. They're very reliable, very accurate. Five of them blew up in the air, didn't make it, and the others hit outside the base area. You remember that, Louis, you were there, right? Louis was very nervous. I wasn't nervous because I knew something that Louis didn't know. So they told me that they were going to hit us, but we, they were just, they just had to do it. Now, I never told that story before, but you know what that story is about? Respect for our nation. Respect for our nation. So we have a, an event coming up that I believe will be the biggest election in the history of our country. We have an event coming up that is important for lots of the obvious reasons, but important because there has never been a more incompetent, more corrupt, 
or worse president in the history of the United States than crooked Joe Biden. What he's doing, he is destroying our country. And the happiest person alive today is a man named Jimmy Carter. Because Jimmy Carter, I would say, had a brilliant, a brilliant presidency if you compare it to what we're going through with this person. He had an absolutely brilliant presidency. But we're going to do 